are live. Hey guys, happy Thursday. Hope everyone's having a great day. We are making chicken pot pie tonight and we're gonna go over a lot of different options for this. Definitely make sure you save this video as soon as I upload it because this is gonna be a great option for Thanksgiving leftovers too. So while we wait for some people to get on here, we're just gonna finish a little bit of prepping. Um, and my cameraman as always is Joe. Hey guys, how are you? We've got people rolling in. We've got uh, St. Jimmy says, hey, how are you? Thanks Hi, for joining. We've got a bunch of others joining. So just so you guys know throughout the live, I will be behind the camera watching the chat roll. So if you have any questions for Danielle or comments or just have anything at all to message, I will be reading those and trying to get those to Danielle, so. And I did drink a lot of coffee, so if I'm going a little bit too quick, Joe's gonna slow me down. I'm <laughs> like last week where I was just, man, I was on a roll. <laughs> He's like, yeah, um, people have questions and you haven't taken a breath in like 30 minutes. <laughs> but also it went well, so I, I did hop her up on coffee again just to see if it would happen again. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, keep this good energy. <laughs> Heston so, Culinary joined and said, hey. Hi guys. Chilies and Smoke says, what's up? Hey buddy, how's it going? So we're just gonna give it just a couple more minutes and we are just going to um, finish prepping the potatoes. I've already prepped everything else and I'm gonna show you guys some exciting new cookware I am very excited about. I've shown a little um, few sneak peeks on it for like last, uh, was it last Saturday we did the creme brulee? And I used their 8x8 Heston Culinary's 8x8 new oven bond cookware in it. So today we are using all of them and I'm gonna show you some of the features and benefits on it while making a delicious comfort dish. We've got some other comments. Someone just said my favorite shepherd's pie is paleo, so good. Oh, so how would you make that? I'm curious on that one. A paleo shepherd's pie. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that sounds good. So the next, I think one of the next slides we're going to do is shepherd's pie because it was tied. I'm, or I shouldn't say tied. It was like, I think three votes off where it was shepherd's pie, uh, one sheet meal, spaghetti and meatballs, and chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie one. So that's what we're gonna be making. And we still got people rolling in here. People still rolling in. Your okay. your girl Gia says hi. Joe What's and up, Gia? How you doing? All right, we are almost done. And then we're gonna get going right on this. I'd like to just give everybody a few minutes to jump on here. And I did have a question too for, um, I wrote it down. What was my question? Oh, I wanted to see, because last Saturday we had a really good turnout. Like I was shocked on how good, how many people were able to show up. Um, I'd love to hear while we're prepping here, would you guys prefer seeing lives on Thursday evenings like we've been doing? Or would you prefer Saturdays? I think Saturday we went on right around noon. Is that right, Joe? Yes, I think so. Yeah, and we had a really good turnout. So I'd love to see, especially with everyone's schedules. I mean, we have the holidays coming up and everything. What would you guys prefer? What works better for you? And if you want to comment and let Joe know here, that would be great. St. Jimmy says, why not both? Of course, you know, <laughs> more is always better. Yeah, I do like the way that you think. I think we're back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. We're not sure quite what's going on. Joe was just saying that he lost connection on his way home from work. So I don't know if it's weather, they're working on the towers, but we're back and the potatoes are prepped. So we're gonna go ahead and get going. Is everybody with us? St. Jimmy is the first to comment and says, okay. we're back. So. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but we have the potatoes prepped, so we are going to start with the chicken. Now, we're going to go over a few different options. Again, uh, if so, uh, 
trying to backtrack a little bit since we're starting over. So we are making chicken pot pie and I do recommend that everyone save this as soon as I post the recipe. We're going to post the live and the recipe because this is going to be great with your Thanksgiving leftovers. This is perfect with turkey. So we are starting off with the new Heston bakeware line. I'm so excited. So it is a triple bond, oven bond, and I have the set. I'm gonna show you all the different pieces here, but I love the um, grid on here because it's really gonna allow the whole chicken to roast. All those juices are gonna come down. It's gonna get nice and crispy. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the chicken. And we started off, so I split the chicken. You could do a whole chicken. If you split it, it's gonna cut the cook time down almost by half and I patted it dry. We're gonna rub it with some olive oil because we want to get that nice crispy skin. Now let me take these off. St. Jimmy says, that's actually kind of beautiful. I think he's talking about the pan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so say, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure he means you too. <laughs> the pans are, I mean, I was even cracking up because Joe has zero opinions on when it comes to pretty much anything. I mean, when we were remodeling, um, it became a joke. And I'm like, Joe, what's your opinion? He's like, I have no opinion. Do whatever you want. I don't care. And he just walked away. So the builder and everybody was cracking up because he always had no opinion. Um, and then so the new cookware came in. I had it all set out. I'm looking at it. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. It has really nice handles for lifting which is so nice to have, especially when you have oven mitts, so then it doesn't slip or anything. They're nice and heavy duty, nice and thick. Um, but anyways, Joe walks in and he's just like, that's really nice looking. Walks back in, that's really nice looking. Like, holy cow, like you're gonna actually cook on that? <laughs> like the concern of getting it dirty. But I've used this probably close to a dozen times now. And you can see it looks great. I mean, I used it earlier, so I did a really quick clean on it because I made this dish earlier. And you can see it still looks amazing. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever done a double take on cookware. Yeah, <laughs> it came in and it, I was just, this is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So now with our chicken, we're gonna season both side, sides of it with lots of kosher salt, lots of pepper. We really want to get everything nice and seasoned. And so chicken holds, like I don't feel like it has a ton of flavor naturally. So adding in that salt and the pepper, that's really all it needs to just get a really great flavor going. Oh, it would help if I started the oven too. <laughs> So we are going to start the oven at 425. You're going to roast the chicken until it reads 165 in the thickest part. I always do the breast. Um, 165, so it's right around 45 minutes or so to reach that temperature. And it's also gonna get nice and crispy in that time. And we're at 425. And we are also baking the chicken pot pie at that same temperature. So you, you would just leave your oven going. And we're just gonna put her in there, let her do her thing. And okay, so we'll do the pastry after this. Let's go ahead and go over to, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go and sit there for a second. I'm gonna pull out the other chicken I have ready. We did get a question, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but it, um, the question is, is the chicken spat shocked? Yes. I, I don't know how to say that word. Sorry. I think it's uh, spat it's spatch, spatch shocked or spatch cooked. It's a cut. And yes, that's what I did too. Um, so you're essentially taking out the spine, you're splitting it in half, just like this here. You're just splitting it right in half. So then it reduces the temperature by half. And you can normally buy them. The that temperature way. or the cook time? Cook time. Okay. Did I say that wrong? Yeah. You said it reduces the temperature by half. Yeah, I'm sorry, the cook time. I just didn't want See? anybody ch cooking their chicken halfway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. only cook it to like 90 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, thank you for 
that. <laughs> um, so no, 165 is definitely the uh, temperature you want to pull it out at. So, but it reduces it by half. So it's really nice for making a weeknight meal a little bit more simple. St. Jimmy said, dang, that cooked fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the food network. It just makes it all, you know, happen really quickly. Um, so this is one option on making the chicken pot pie is we're roasting our chicken. It's so delicious. You can chop it up and use the skin it skin in is the skin in it as well. There's that coffee really kicking in. Um, or you can peel that off and just use the meat itself. So this is another piece of the oven bond ware. It's a little bit of a smaller bakeware, but you can see it still holds a whole chicken on it. But this is great for roasting vegetables, cooking different kinds of meats. Um, it would need to be a little bit of a smaller cut since it is a little bit more shallow. But there is our one piece. So I'm gonna put this over here for now. And let's go ahead and head over to the oven. And we're gonna get making the dish here. I almost lost my concentration because as you were going, a text from your friend, Bailey, came through. And the first words were, hey, hoser, what's up? <laughs> my friends are so sweet. <laughs> We're hockey fans. <laughs> <laughs> so for this, you're gonna want a nice big pan. Um, I believe this is, it's either a 10 or a 12 inch, but it's nice and big and thick. Um, ideally, you would wanna use the big stock pot that Heston has. Um, I'm using their Nanobond cookware, but I'm using this pan today because I want you guys to really be able to see everything going on. It makes it a little bit easier for filming. So we have our pan, we're gonna add four tablespoons of butter. In the dish that we're using today, so the recipe is going to fit a nine by 13 bakeware dish, and that is part of, which I'm gonna show you um, towards the end, that's what this is going to fit, and that's what um, the new oven bond is. It has a nine by 13 and an eight by eight. Heston Culinary said that's their five quart saute pan. Thank you, five quart saute pan. Melissa Pixie 36 says, hi, how are you guys doing? Hi, what good. are we cooking for us today? I think she just joined. We are making chicken pot pie and we're making chicken pot pie in a nine by 13 casserole dish. So this will feed right around six to eight people. Personally, I love doing a nice big uh, portion of chicken pot pie because it always tastes better the next day. I mean, leftovers are the best. Mm. Um, but you could cut this recipe in half to do a eight by eight baking dish and that'll feed about four people or two really, really hungry people. <laughs> so we're just letting that butter melt and we're gonna go ahead and start adding in our veggies here. This goes really quick. Um, that's so, what you said last week. That is what I said. You know, I checked the time. It was 30 minutes. It wasn't 20 like I said, but it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to add in our carrots. We have, let's see, two cups of carrots. We have a cup and a half of celery. One large onion. Everything is diced. And we're going to just let this do its magic. We want it to soften up a little bit, which is going to take right around five minutes. And Heston Culinary says chicken pot pie leftovers are the best. I must agree. I actually would prefer it the day after for sure. Yeah, anything like soup-like or, you know, that's really just going to let those flavors just marry together. I mean, that is the best. It's so good. And especially this time of year, you know, when we are getting into the holidays, everyone's pressed for time, you know, it's really hard to make sure that you're eating a good lunch, especially when you're running around and you've got work and everything else. And this is a great way to ensure that you are having a nice, hearty, healthy meal. And Rhonda to, asked, is Tank left waiting for leftovers? <laughs> always. That dog is always waiting. 
And here's a funny story. So when we adopted Stitch, I did not know he was a counter surfer. I came home from work, I just got groceries, I had a rotisserie chicken I picked up from the grocery store. I put it on the counter. Joe was on a fishing trip or something like that, so I was handling all of his business stuff, and DHL showed up. I literally walked out to the garage, signed the thing, you know, whatever release, came back in, rotisserie chicken, gone. The whole thing gone. I mean, if I was gone for five minutes, that wasn't like, I could have sworn, I mean, I had it, I know that I had it, I'm looking all over, and it's not like he was even in the kitchen. I mean, he was like laying down or something like that, so I never thought that that was him, and our other dog, she would never, I mean, she's too small to even do that. But yeah, figured that out, that that dog is a counter surfer. He ate that whole chicken in five, I can't even be mad, I mean, that's respect right there. <laughs> Gluten-free and golden join and said, hey, how are you guys? Hey, girlfriend, how are you? Get a look at what's happening in the pan. Yeah, it's already smelling good, guys. I mean, this is, and I love the color. It's a so nice, vibrant. Very fall. It is very fall. So let's go over some different options for substitution. If you don't have time to roast the chicken off, go ahead and pick up a rotisserie chicken. Or if you want to do chicken breasts on um, the roasting pan, that works great as well. So it's whatever your favorite, um, I would say your favorite cut of the chicken is. I like to do a mixture, which is why I'll do a whole chicken. But a rotisserie chicken is perfect. You can pick it up at the grocery store, chop it all up, and throw it in. Um, also, your vegetables, you can always prep ahead of time, too. If you don't have, let's say you don't have carrots, parsnips are a great option. Um, I'm using potatoes. If you don't have potatoes, you can always omit those as well. And for the stock, I recommend using chicken stock, but you could use turkey stock, vegetable stock. Always, you can use homemade or store-bought, whichever, you know, whatever works best for your schedule. If you're going to turn this in and save this for, uh, again, I recommend saving this post after I post it um, in an hour or so when we're done filming. I recommend saving it because this is a great Thanksgiving leftover meal. It's a great way to use that leftover turkey. And instead of doing a crust, you can always do stuffing on top. So it sounds so good. <laughs> I've got to try making that too. Uh, but if you're going to change it over to turkey, I'd recommend to either use your turkey gravy or using a turkey stuff. But chicken will, chicken or vegetable will work well too. She has said, and to think I thought Stitch was the innocent one. <laughs> no. Just uh, the opposite. Yeah, Stitch is our troublemaker and Tank is, Tank is the very well behaved one. Um, yeah, it's pretty wild. We did, I'm so excited, and um, you know, I've already been letting some people know, I did buy a dog treadmill for Stitch, because you guys have seen his workout, which is rolling in the yard, he'll catch the ball, go over and roll around on it, and he won't keep playing catch, like Tank will, you know, keep moving. So I'm like, this dog has got to get a good workout. He's got to run or something. And when we used to live on the beach, Joe would take him out on the beach, and running in that sand is a great workout. But yeah, so we're going to see a lot of, I'm sure, like Pinterest fail style videos. I'll have to post those to like TikTok or something. Um, I'll obviously turn them in my stories here, though. So that'll be a lot of fun. So, what are we looking for when, how do we know this is done? We're waiting for those onions really to get translucent. And there's another really good substitute. So if you don't have onions or if you want to get a little bit of a different style onion flavor, leeks work amazing in this. Um, it's a really good substitute for onions as well. And um, because you, you don't really saute leeks the same time that you do onions, you can just use a little bit thinner, different style. Um, it would cut the cooking time down by a couple minutes too. But yeah, we're just waiting for these onions to get a little bit translucent, which they are, they look like they are about there. 
So let's go ahead and add in our other ingredients. We have, let's see, one and a half cups of potatoes. I cubed them up right around the same size as the carrots because we want everything to cook right around that same time. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but because this is all going to cook together, we do want to make sure that they are closer to the same size. Our seasonings, we have two teaspoons of salt, we have one teaspoon of pepper, let's see, half a teaspoon of onion powder and half a teaspoon of garlic, two tablespoons of parsley, you could use fresh or dried, since we're doing pretty much everything dried like this, I'm just going to add that. And we're just going to mix this together. It's smelling so good. It just, to me, it smells like Thanksgiving. So, I, did we get any answers before, um, besides the both days, on filming for Thursdays or Saturdays? Yeah. No, I think we lost connection and lost momentum on that. So okay. if so, anybody has any opinions, yeah, Thursdays or Saturdays, preference on live. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so now we are adding in our whole chicken already cut up. You can see I did remove the skin. Joe likes to eat that skin on its own, so I'm just doing that to, you know, give him a little treat extra. <laughs> Melissa Pixie says the vegetables are starting to look good. Yes, if uh, you can you. smell it, it's amazing. Heston Culinary says, love that Nanobond sizzle. Yeah, oh, the <laughs> sizzle. And you're going to see, let me go ahead and show you guys. It's going to start to get a really nice golden brown color. You can see that on some of the onions and vegetables happening here. Oh, it smells so good. Now we are adding in our chicken stock, four cups. And you guys can see why you need a nice big pan. I've learned my lesson, I swear. I'm going to start using bigger pans. <laughs> One and a half cups of peas. And as Joe would call this, this is his salad because it's green. So it counts, right Joe? <laughs> yeah, you get dinner and a salad all in one. <laughs> yeah. Or he'll put like a piece of parsley on something and he's like, oh, there's my salad. Um, so we have one and a half cups of corn. And our thickening agent is going to be cornstarch. We have three tablespoons. I'm using this because it's a gluten-free option. Um, and into this, I'm adding Oh, man, I'm just making a mess. That's about normal. Um, adding in half of a cup of heavy cream, and we're going to make this into a little slurry. If you don't have heavy cream, just use some water, some stock. Either one will be fine. I like adding a little bit of heavy cream just to give it a little bit more of a rich flavor. Since this one is more of, we're just doing a topping, versus doing um, a full crust where it's on the bottom and the top. I want to make it a little bit more rich in flavor. Gia said, I can't wait to have your cooking. I literally just gulped. <laughs> that feeling is mutual. Absolutely. I think that would be a lot of fun. But although, I think if we got together, we're not going to be cooking. <laughs> we'll be going out to dinner, have somebody else cook. Melissa asked, how many dogs do you have? We have two. We have Stitch and Tank. Both one one too many. Yeah. <laughs> Joe always says, um, what is it? Uh, I forget that saying. You were saying like, oh, one's good. Let's ruin it and get a second. <laughs> yeah. One dog is great. Let's ruin it by getting another one. Yeah. I love my boys. They're so sweet. <laughs> So now we want to turn up the heat just a little bit. We're going to mix this in well. And we're not going to add in our cornstarch slurry until it starts to boil just a little bit. Which 
with this oven and this skillet, it's going to happen really quick. I forgot with the move and everything how much I missed cooking on gas. And then as soon as the oven got delivered, I was just like, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> it's a whole new level of happiness. Melissa asked what breeds they are. They're, they're mutts. Yeah, they're both adopted and who knows. <laughs> I almost, Pound dogs. Yeah, I wanted to do that DNA test and I was like, uh, I'm not going not gonna to spend the money on it. I'd rather buy shoes. <laughs> All right, so you can see right around the edge, it's starting to bubble right now. This is when we want to add in our slurry. really quick so this dish if you're you know once you have everything prepped and ready to go this portion only takes right around 10 maybe 15 minutes the bake time is only 30 to 35 minutes so really you can have this delicious dinner in about an hour or so okay so do we have any questions on the recipe um, we're going to be transitioning over to baking it here in just a little bit. And I'm going to show you some more of the, these beautiful oven bond pans. I don't see any questions coming through yet. Okay. Melissa says she loves pugs. Cool. Yeah. Pugs are good. Yeah. I think all we right. love all dogs. I don't know. Not too many dogs I don't like. Yeah. Big, small, pretty much like them all. Yeah. Okay, it's getting really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off on this. We're gonna go ahead and transition back over here. I'm gonna show you guys the pan that we're using today. Now I'm using their eight by eight because I already have one of the um, chicken pot pies ready to go and a nine by 13 here. So we're going to pour it in, let me actually move this over some, make sure I have enough space, and then you guys are really going to see me make a mess with the pastry. <laughs> Bacon and spice just joined, said sorry I'm late. Hey, you, <laughs> you're never late, you're always right on time, don't worry about that. Yes, and congratulations my friend for being a recipe winner with a golden recipe. Um, she won uh, a delicious cooking dish, which I need that recipe still, with loaded potatoes. It looked amazing. So this recipe will fit a 9 by 13. If you cut it in half, it's going to fit an 8 by 8. And with the, this in here without making too much of a mess. Um, with the cookware, this is triple bond, so it's nice and heavy duty. You can see the eight by eight has nice sturdy handles as well, so it makes it really easy for lifting. That, I cannot say that enough because all you guys, I mean, when you cook a lot, you know that that part is just so important. I mean, the last thing you wanna do is have anything slip on you, and because it is triple bond. You don't have to worry about warping or anything like that. It's safe up to 600 degrees and it is broiler safe as well. So if you want to get that nice crust on something like when we do make shepherd's pie, we'll be using the Heston culinary pans here. And I like to get the top of the potatoes just a little bit crispy and turning up that broiler will do the trick. We did get a comment for you to do brownies. That sounds good. So, you know, brownies are always That's always welcome. Yeah. And I have been baking in these, and this is the perfect brownie dish. All right, guys. Do you want plain or what flavor? What are you thinking? Just extra, extra, extra chocolate? <laughs> Let's see. What kind of brownies do you want? We're getting a lot of requests from one viewer that wants brownies, brownies, brownies. So <laughs> tell us what you want. Hey, I can respect that. <laughs> when you got a craving, you got a craving. Yeah, absolutely. 
Look how good that looks. It smells so good right now. We got so, one comment of caramel swirl, chocolate. That that that's my move right there, chocolate. So <laughs> and then chocolate caramel. Okay, yeah. Now here are some more substitutions for the top. Um, if you're not gluten free, you're not dairy free, puff pastry is a beautiful option when it comes to topping off your chicken pot pie. Um, when you're topping it with puff pastry, just sprinkle on some kosher salt, some um, black pepper, and bake it exact same temperature, same time frame, everything. Um, you can also do a pre-made pie crust. You can make your own pie crust. You can make your own puff pastry, whatever works best for you. You guys know I do not make my, well, I shouldn't say that because I did make one. I was trying to make puff pastry and it turned out like a butter crust. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, have to change my wording on that because that turned out really good. But, um, as a whole, I really don't make my own pie crust just because it's just so easy to open up a bag and follow the instructions and do that. So that's what I did with a gluten-free. It's already been in the fridge chilling. So I'm gonna show you guys a trick. And this is really, you can do this with any kind of pie crust, but this is my trick when it comes to gluten-free pie crusts because they tend to break apart when you start to fold it over, pour it on, or you know, put it on top of a, a pie dish or you know, bakeware, anything like that. We're just gonna flour that. I use cookie cutters. I saw somebody do this with the top of a pie I was like, that's genius because you can make little pieces fold well, but it's really hard to make the whole sheet, if I'm saying that right, go on there without cracking and breaking. So this is just my personal favorite way, but again, you guys do whatever works best for you. We did get a question asking what we are up to for Halloween. I am going to be in Costa Rica. I leave on Saturday morning, super early. I'm going with my sister-in-law to a wellness retreat. Um, we're joking, this is gonna be the first time we go on vacation and we're gonna lose weight. <laughs> Cause it's like, um, you know, all healthier foods and yoga and meditation and all this different stuff. So are you gonna go out with our friends and get all dressed up and stuff? Or what are you thinking? Nah. <laughs> Just hang out with the dogs? Call it good? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. No plans. So, cookie cutter, any shape. And I just like to place them right on top. It just makes it so much easier than trying to get that whole crust on and you can make some really pretty designs this way. I did try to do lattice work earlier with the crust and I let it get a little bit too warm so you guys can see my sweet lattice work on the final dish. <laughs> Someone said spoil the trick-or-treaters. Well I mean I, we've definitely got candy so I'll be handing out candy for sure. Yeah. And of course I got all my favorites so that if we don't get too many trick-or-treaters I get to keep some. Aw, that's such a bummer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, I mean, can they celebrate in Costa Rica? I don't know. I've never been there. So, we'll see. Got a lot of new people joining. <laughs> Chef Grub joined. Hey. FTV Parts joined. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are making chicken pot pie today. And we're just finishing off our crust here. And you can crust. roll this out a little bit thinner if you want. Personally, I like a nice thick crust. And let me go ahead and get this out of the way. We're we'll going to pop that in the oven. Oh, I need to do the brush on top. 
and completely optional. You guys can brush the top with an egg wash and then we're gonna add some salt, pepper. Again, you really wanna layer everything with salt and pepper um, to get that seasoning throughout. And adding an egg wash is gonna make it a little bit more of a brown so you get that little crispy flaky top on there. And Melissa Pixie says she hopes your weather is good for Costa Rica. Yes, she's been stressing about that a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, I was a little bit, I actually just looked because I realized, well, I haven't packed and <laughs> I have appointments all day tomorrow. So I'm like, I should probably look at the weather and start packing a little bit. And um, yeah, it changed from, it was supposed to be like 60 in the evenings and then 80 during the day, which I mean, I don't know how you guys are, but that is so hard to pack for in a carry-on suitcase for a week because it's like sweatshirts and um, uh, sweatshirts at night and then jeans or a, what am I thinking, t-shirt and shorts during the day. But now it's going to be a solid 80 to 90 degrees. So dresses it is the entire time. Harry McNeff is here. Hi, how are you doing? Heston Culinary said, nothing like a fresh topper for the pot pie. Looks delicious. Thank you. Yeah, it adds such a nice crust on there. When you're going a little bit thicker on there, and we're going to add some kosher salt. Julia Mabel said, this looks amazing. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It um, smells so good right now. And again, you guys that are joining, make sure that you save this recipe as soon as we post it here, because this is perfect for Thanksgiving leftovers. So some different options for topping, if you're doing this for Thanksgiving leftovers, is going to be your stuffing, even sweet potatoes or regular potatoes. So if you're gonna do um, a topping like that, where it's almost like a shepherd's pie, but with the chicken pot pie inside, or I should say turkey pot pie inside, top it with your, um, mashed potatoes or mint potatoes in the recipe and just yeah bake it off the exact same way shannon cooney asked are the pans easy to clean they are really easy to clean so i already put that in there um let me grab this one i've used this pan i mean pretty much all of them about a dozen times and you can see it looks brand new. Now, eventually over time, it may get you know some scratches here and there from normal wear and tear, but overall it cleans up really easily. You can use um, a barkeeper's friend on it. That's what I've been using on it. And just, you know, a soft scrub brush on it and it cleans up beautifully. And they're really nice and heavy duty and all of them have these really nice handles. I'm addicted to these handles. I'm gonna say it a million times over. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna throw it in this oven here. I'm gonna take this over and grab the other one. Am I following or stay here? Um, you can stay there and I'm gonna grab this one. Melissa says, looks good. Bacon and Spice says, I can't wait to see that golden top. One of my favorite comfort foods. I agree with that. Yeah, it really is just the Best comfort food. Let's get that up to. And Melissa says, once again, she loves shepherd pie. <laughs> I'm thinking you're going to have to make her a shepherd pie here, Danielle. I think so. And you know what? I'm up for it. It has been a hot minute since I made shepherd's pie. So here is the finished dish. Um, I made this just a little bit ago before we started. So you can see that nice crispy top on there. And this is their nine by 13. This is to me a universal pan, just like an eight by eight. You have certain pieces in bakeware and cookware that it's just kind of, it makes life so much easier. This is one of those pans. This is your classic nine by 13 size. It has a nice depth to it. So it's perfect for casseroles. And that's why I wanted to make the chicken pot pie or the shepherd's pie, but you guys did pick the other one. Um, we'll do shepherd's pie next time. Uh, but it's perfect for casseroles like that too. So let's go ahead and get a scoop out. And 
And the, so this is the size that the recipe that I post, this is the size that it's going to make. The one that I just used is an eight by eight. So again, just if you're gonna do an eight by eight, which will feed about four people, um, go ahead and just cut all the ingredients right in half. This one, depending on how hungry you are, will typically feed right around six to eight people. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of food. <laughs> Yeah, it depends on your friends. With my friends, that's four people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to say because it's like, how many servings? Well, that's right now, and that's an hour from now, too. So that's one serving. Harry McNeff said that's a lot of food, especially with the other one in the background. It just means I get to eat two of these delicious chicken pot pies. Yeah, so we did a poll the other day on what should, what are your favorite um, leftover dishes, like meals that I should make for, for Joe before I take off. And this one came up, so I'm like, oh, that's perfect, you know. Joe's gonna have a lot of chicken pot pie to eat here. Let's go and scoop out this goodness. And you can see how thick that sauce is. And this is completely gluten-free, dairy-free, you're welcome to add full gluten, full dairy products to it. Just sub exact same everything over on it. Um, you don't need to change any, any of the ingredients, the amounts or anything, and it's going to turn out like this. So you can see, I always call, I was used to be known for soupy pies, not anymore. Got this nailed. <laughs> In my 20s, I would always make Joe and his friends pies and everyone joked that I'd make soupy pies. And I'm it's like, berry pie soup. Yeah, I'm going to figure this out and figure it out. So it's nice and hearty. Uh, I'm gonna put this in here. I wanna keep that nice and pretty so I can take some pretty pictures of it. So we have our carrots, our chicken, peas, everything in there. You can always substitute different ingredients um, as far as like carrots for parsnips. You don't like peas, don't add peas. You like lima beans instead, add lima beans. It's, that's a beautiful part about a dish like this is you can really customize it for what you love to eat. All right, guys. Bacon and Spice says the lattice work looks great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm working on lattice work. That's... Heston Culinary said it can be hard to get the consistency right, but it looks like you nailed it. Thank you. Yeah, it took a lot of practice and it's one of those, you know, every recipe that I create, I try to make it as easy as possible. And it took a few tries, but I mean, as you can see, it came together really quickly. Cookware is really important when you're wanting to create really delicious dishes. Also, um, starting tomorrow, there's going to be a sale on the cookware. So um, keep an eye out on my stories. I'm gonna put in some promo codes on there for you guys and it's going to be exclusive. I think it's gonna run for a couple of days, so make sure that you act quickly on it. You have the holidays coming up. Somebody in your life likes to cook, likes to bake. Definitely get them these pans. I mean, they're beautiful. You can get them individually or in a set too. Um, and where can they go to get them? At HestonCulinary.com. I will post a link. I'll post my coupon and everything on there. If you have any questions on anything, you can always DM me. I get back to everyone pretty quickly and um, yeah this looks so good it smells so good <laughs> so any questions on the bakeware that we used today you guys have any questions on that anything on the recipe don't see anything so far everybody's just saying beautiful looks amazing great job thank you it smells so good I'm so excited to dig in right now um, so we will be posting the recipe here. Again, make sure that you save it because this is going to be a great leftovers for Thanksgiving. And yeah, we will see you guys in probably two weeks because next week I'm going to be gone unless Joe takes over my IG account next week and does his own live. Um, oh man, what would I cook for a live? <laughs> so these are my Snickers bars left over from Halloween. <laughs> I could definitely do like a what not to do. Yeah, actually you make a really good grilled cheese. And you make an amazing coffee, which is why I'm like, 
so excited. <laughs> Joe makes great drinks. Let's see, really I got coffee, cheese. I got grilled cheese. Omelets. It's Funny been enough, a long time though. I cannot make an omelet to save my life and I can barely make a grilled cheese. So it's a good balance there. <laughs> Harry McNeff said barbecue, I wish. My friend, um, yeah, I'm not the, uh, I'm not the barbecue bacon and spice said hide your pans, Danielle. <laughs> I think they're don't heavy duty touch. enough to hold up to my abuse. I think that they are too, but don't touch my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be crying like, oh no. <laughs> I'd be the one guy who figures out how to scratch it and yeah. be the end of me. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Again, make sure we save this. Any questions, um, send me over a uh, DM and I can respond to anything on there. And we appreciate you guys as always. We'll see you in about two weeks here. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.